Johnny Carlson C. Clay here, and this is another VPN chat. I am here with comedian, actor, and the star of the award-winning series in the nick of time, Carlos Big Los Massey. How you doing today, sir? Man, I'm doing pretty good, man. Can't complain, man. Um, hey, man, just glad to be here, man. Thank you for having me, man. Appreciate you. No problem, no problem, man. Definitely glad to have you on VPN chat. We're going to talk about some things, some behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, yeah. But let's uh, let's get started to your background. First of all, um, you play sports. You play football, to be exact. Right. Right. Um, talk talk about that. Talk about your uh, athletic career briefly. Well, um, growing up, you know, growing up in the neighborhood, I always played sports. And I always gravitated to football because that's the only sport that I could fit in. And if I can say that, you know, um, I was – I was a little too big to play baseball. I tried, it didn't work. A little too big to play basketball. I tried, it didn't work. So I found something that fit me. Mm. I, found, I said, wow, there's some other big guys. We can run around, we can hit each other. So <laughs> um, I, I gravitating to football. Um, it allowed me to take out a lot of my frustration growing up. I actually got to hit people and didn't get in trouble. That's what I loved about it. I love being able to hit people, but it actually taught me teamwork. It taught me, um, gave me self-confidence. Um, helped, taught me how to work out, how to really trust my body and learn how to, you know, push myself to a limit. I, I've been playing football since I was about 12, man, about 12 mm -hmm. years old, um, organized football and played all the way up until my senior year in college. So I always enjoyed it. I love the sport. Um, and, it, and actually, it, it, it took me a lot of places. I got to meet some great people. Um, so I always enjoyed it. And the, 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 just the lessons I learned from football, Tough skin, um, learn how to take criticism, learn how to uh, work as a team, um, take immediate feedback. Because doing football, you get immediate feedback, not wait down the road. If you mess up, they're going to tell you, hey, you suck. <laughs> yeah, right now, you suck. Get off my field. And you have to be able to take it and not take it personal. So I learned a lot doing football. It helped me grow as a person. Because growing up, man, and we'll probably get into it, you know, I was one of them kids trying to figure out. I was a little chubby kid, so I was always the one picked on and stuff like that. I had developed tough skin early. Mm. So, you know, so football helped me do that. So how did how did you uh, go from doing sports, playing football, to how did you get into the, the comedy world? How did that transpire? Man, I was still from growing up, man. I always, had, I always had tough skin, and people used to pick on me all the time growing up, you know. I've heard it all. I was a little chubby kid out of here. Every fat joke, every black joke, every nappy hair joke, every all kind of joke. So I had to learn because I, you know, I used to get in trouble a lot because I used to fight a lot when I was little, like at elementary school and stuff like that. So I had to find a way to stop getting in trouble but still hurt them. So I had to learn how to, you know, be witty with my words, learn how to joke. And then, you know, in football and growing up, you learn how to play the dozens and everybody joking. And I was always a jokester growing up. Um, mm -hmm. I was always um, the class clown, laughing, joking. I, I could never be serious. I don't care what the situation was. Don't ever sit beside me during a serious moment. I'm going to find <laughs> something, something to laugh about. I don't care what it is. And that's just the way I dealt with a lot of stuff. I deal with my pain that way. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm -hmm. laughter has always come natural to me. And I love making people laugh and cracking jokes and Always in, always the jokes. And so once I got out of school and had a family and um, just somebody, somebody dared me to try it. They dared me to try it. And then I tried it and I loved it. Every awesome. What kind of, I guess, what gratification have you received? Because I, I hear that being on stage as a comedian is like a drug. That's what I hear yes. from my fellow comedian yes. friends. Like what, how does that, <laughs> Well, how do you get gratified? Like, what's the gratification from that? Man, I'm telling you, nothing, there's nothing like going up there. And just for me, going into a place that nobody know you, there's no preconceived, people going to always, you know, especially when they hear comments. So when you see a comedian, you already have your favorite comedian in your head. So they're prejudging you. They don't know you, but to have them laughing by the end of your set, there's nothing. Because once again, in comedy, you get immediate feedback. Mm. Like films and stuff, you have to wait till it come out, look at the reviews, what will not. You step up there in a the comment, and within the first five minutes, they're either going to boo you or get quiet or they're going to laugh with you. 
Mm-hmm. Those are the three things that's gonna happen on every comment. Either they're gonna ride with you or they're gonna sit like this. That's it, you know what I'm saying? But to have a have a crowd really respond to you and you go into a set and people laugh and people come up to you and be like, man, you know, I I I that joke, I can relate to it. Mm-hmm. Or that joke kind of hit me, you know, that that helped me get through. I was dealing with I was dealing with a crazy ass. I ain't know how to deal with her. But that joke kind of helped me deal with the crazy ex that I went to church with. She was stalking me in the name of So thank you, you know, for saying that to me. So uh, the, the the crowd, man, that's not, it, it's, it really is, man. It's really like a drug for you to go up there, test your material, um, and people really respond to it. Have you ever been heckled? Yes. And how, man, did, you, how did that go? Like, how did you react to that? <laughs> um... The first time I didn't I didn't react too well, and I probably shouldn't have did because I was in a church. Oh um, lord! Oh lord! <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, and, and and you know, it's it's like, especially when I first started doing comedy, not like even now. You you can find a comment every time you go rock down the street, but now when I started like over 15, 20 years ago, I started doing comedy in the church, so that was kind of taboo. They was like, nah, we don't supposed to be laughing. Uh uh-uh, uh, you know. So one of the first early comedy shows I was doing comedy and. You know how somebody's laughing, but they're not really laughing, they're mocking you. So he was like, <laughs> yeah, that's funny right there. I'm, I'm pretty sure Jesus laughed. Wow. So I tried to ignore it, but then he kept wanting attention. And just, and and people listen. The thing you can do is when a comic on stage is to distract him or try to make, you know, try to bring light to yourself because he will give you the attention you want. And I happen to give him the attention he wanted because what happened, and I didn't mean to, Carson. He, okay, how can I put this? He had dreads, but he was bald. He was, uh, he had dreads on the side, but he was bald on the top. Yikes. All I said, Carson, all I said, hey, man, you need to stop playing and cut that off. Crowd Yikes. was crazy. And I was like, I loved it. I was like, why are you scared people, man? Either you're going to be bald headed or you're going to have dreads. You can't do both, man. Jesus said, please. <laughs> the feeling I had from that, he, he, me and for he really wanted to fight me after. I was like, but we had a conversation. I said, you came at me, right. don't you can't. If you did, you got to take it. Just like right. I crack a lot of jokes, and people crack jokes on me, and that's fine. I know people don't need no malice and shit. But that particular night, I, he he got it. now he was one of the deacons. And he had to get it. Not the, not the deacons. <laughs> yeah, and 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 Carlton, I don't usually do that. That's not my style to pick on people in the crowd or you know. But if you're continually trying to say something to get my attention, I'm gonna give you the attention that you want. I feel it. I feel it one hundred percent. That you know what, like I, yeah, that 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 I would ne- like. I, I do a lot of things, but right. trying to be a comic is not one of them. I, <laughs> I totally respect. You all for what you do. Um, right. I, I know I get up there and just freeze and be like, <laughs> "Yeah, nah, that's yeah." I'm I'm gonna leave it up to y'all, but that's dope. Um, so let's get into. I know we um we going to talk about like how we first met and get into our beginnings and everything. Um, I remember first meeting you. You were the host of the second Playwrights Gala Awards in right. Greenville, South Carolina. You host mm-hmm. with uh Tar Sharp. Um. I don't think me and you had a com- had a conversation, but I like I said, I know I won that night, and I think you gave me my award. I think if I'm, it's been a while, but, right? Yeah, um, right. Yeah. So we met then, and I told this story, and I tell it again to you. Uh, I told the story when I interviewed Bird. Um, but that night, um, uh, I was sitting with Javetta and TJ Swan, and um, mm-hmm. we were all. It was me, Shataria. My sister Kendra and uh, our other actor friend Torrance, and we were all sitting together at the table. Yeah. And we was all we, pack, we, we packing that little room. We was packing <laughs> that little room like this. <laughs> go, go ahead, man. <laughs> See, I was trying to be nice, and you <laughs> acted up. You acted yeah. up. We was we was um, all sitting next to each other. But uh, go ahead, man. My bad, my bad. But we was all at the table together, and um, I I remember just really vibing with Javetta and TJ, and um. I told Bird in our talk that I said, yeah, that night I really said in my head, I was like, I really want to do something with this crowd of people, um, you know, with this. And that's how, that's kind of how Lover's Lane was birthed. 
was because right. of being at that event and just meeting the different type of people that that were there. Now we did we did chop chop it up at the third was it the third one? I can't no, that wasn't the third one because I was in New York. Uh the one whatever one I was in Texas, me and you had a conversation because right. I found out that you were a big fan of the Lions then. Yes. That's why I yes. found out you were a big fan of the Lions then. What about the show that 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 pulled you in? What was it about it that you liked? Man, I love a good story. And I'm you know and I'm a night hawk. Sometimes I stay up late and I love just a good story and I love to kind of follow from the beginning. And when I met you and saw you in South Carolina, just your talent, man. I said, I like I follow this dude. So once I started watching the first one, it was just the storyline of that. I wanted to see where it went. And so I was I followed it ever since and I love the characters. Um I tell um Chantel, is it Chantel or Chantel? Chantel. Um, I tell her every day, I said, I'm your number one fan. I would love her from the jump. Her little loud self. And I was just like, I love her. She is so loud. I, I just love the characters, love the storyline. It just, I don't know, it just did something to me to follow that storyline with the family and see how different. And I'm telling you, man, I always tell you this. I always say you're one of the best writers that I know because you, the writing of that, that's what caught me. The writing, it was just the characters and trying to figure out what was going to happen in each season. It got twist and twist, and we thought he was gone. Then he showed back up, and then the brother. Um, it was just, it was just overall a good storyline for me, man. I enjoyed it. I appreciate that, man. That that definitely means a lot. So you watched all one hundred episodes? Yes, I watched everything. I watched all of them. <laughs> Each, I start from the beginning, uh, and what I love, and I told you this, I love to watch a show and watch any artist. Well, I can watch them grow and get better and evolve and get better. I watched you from the beginning where it was a setting this way. Then when the set, the set started getting better, the quality started getting better, the camera shot, and I, I watched it grow. And I was like, this dude is really, because, you know, that's, and I'm a fan of people, man. I love to see people grow and evolve and do something different and, and challenge themselves. So that's what I loved about each season, it got better. Each season, you push the envelope. Each season, you had more, um, how can I say, oh, more provocative naked shower scenes. Each season, um, that's your trademark, too, the naked shower. <laughs> <laughs> I say, they ain't got to watch off in sight. But, <laughs> but it, it, it was just to watch you evolve, man, and watch your characters evolve. And I, I start clinging to all the characters. And um, what's the, the um, I can't think of her name. She's a sweet little... Um, she was the the wife and the family didn't really like her. I can't think of her uh, name. So. Yeah, man, I was so, I, I was so big. I was her fan. Like, y'all leave her alone. She just trying to live her life. Then y'all go again. You know what I'm saying? She trying to get a little boo and somebody run him off. He crazy or something. But I was, I became a fan of the show. So who, so, I mean, I think it's obvious, but who was your favorite character on the show and why? I was, I was, Sheree, that's her name. Yeah, Sheree. Yeah, yeah, Sheree. Because I just, I just, I just, I just cleaned her story and what she was trying to do. Even though she was a little, you know, she got caught up in a situation. That's life. But I don't know. I just, I, you know, I just thought she. I, I was her biggest fan. Even I was rooting for her. Even she did my man wrong and sleeping with the other dude. That you know that happens. You know, you, you make mistakes. Um, you know, sometimes you know. You slip and fall and fall on something. But I was just, it's just her. She's one that's my favorite character. I loved how, because we'll get into that later. Like, we'll get into the actual movie later. But I love when we were shooting the Kwanzaa movie, how excited you and Audrey were. So we shot at, the actress' name is Risha, but we shot at her house yeah. for one of the scenes. Yeah. I love how I love how excited y'all were when y'all actually finally right. met her in person. That was that yes. was cool to me. That was cool to me. It was like, can, Man, we, take a, we, can I, we take a picture? That yeah. Was cool. I, had to, I had to come down. I didn't want to feel like I was stalking her or nothing like that. Cause, you know, it's, you know, this new age stalking stuff. I was just a fan of her and just made to meet her. I always said, Man, I would love to just do a scene, just do something with her, like she's my daughter or something, something in the same scene or on the same kind of set. Mm -hmm. I think she's a dope. All of them are dope, but I just, I just showed her. Yeah. 
definitely. Um, like I, said, I think I think like I said, I love how what I love about the Victory Productions crew, I love about you guys is you all are a fan are fans of each other. I love how y'all get excited when y'all meet each other, especially when it comes to mm-hmm. the um, you know, North Carolina and the Georgia crew. Right. And, you know, y'all don't obviously y'all don't see each other. So when y'all do get in one room, it's like it's like y'all get really excited about that. And I, that does right. my heart. That does my heart good from the outside, you know, looking in. I think that's I yeah. think that that's dope. That's really dope. Yeah. And, that, and that and that really speaks to you, man. It speaks to because everything I always believe is everything rolls downhill. If you have a great leader, a great positive great, that sets to this expectation, good spirit, we all a family, man. We all cheer for each other. There's no competition. We we po- we promote each other. And it starts from you, man. You just came in genuine spirit, just um, had very creative, humble. Um, when I saw you perform that night in soccer, I was like, man, this dude got it. He was just humble. A lot of people don't don't be that way. A lot of people get big headed, but you all, you stay humble, man. And everybody I met from Georgia, I love them. It's like a family, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just get excited, man, just to see people creating and doing stuff, man. So... Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Whenever I see something come about VPN or anything, I know I'm watching it. I'm putting it on. We're blasting it because, like you said, this you know it gave me a shot. You know, so I'm, I'm part of the family too. Ah, I appreciate that, man. Definitely appreciate you, of course, for sure. Now you also uh, had a role. Your first role, official role with us uh, was on Lovers Lane. You played Malachi right. and Gabe's dad. Um, right. <laughs> the, the, the dad that left the family, but we find out why he left the family. Right. Um, how was it uh, playing that role and coming into? Because you came in, you came in at the end of season three, like the very last episode mm-hmm. of season three, and then carried on to season four. How was right. it playing that that part? Man, you, I probably, you probably, know. I was so excited just to be a part of Love is Lane. It's almost like being a part of a show that you love. So when you contact me, I was like, oh, yeah, I get to, yeah, finally. Um, but just to be in that role, I'm a, I'm, man, Kevin J. Stone is one of my, one of the, I'm just such a big fan of this guy just as a human being. Mm-hmm. Just to be on set with him, him and Nelson, you know, those guys are just, you know, when I say just great guys, talent, top of the list, professional. Um, you know, just to be in that particular space in that vein. And Kevin, he's so, I feel, I, and still, still to the day, I'm like, I still feel like I should have whooped his tail because he did such a job with his pain and his anger. And you know what I'm saying? That's like a real issue that he really didn't let that go. And I'm like, man, nah, man, I feel in the scene, I'm like, nah, I need to whoop your tail. I need to take my belt off. So, <laughs> um, but for real, that's how real it felt. And we and I, I look back at some of those moments and our stare downs and our intense moments, that was real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know he went to a place and I went to a place. And I'm like, man, hold on, man. He ain't gonna talk to me. I'm your daddy. Um, but it was great, great set. Um, Tia, she, you know, I I still think she didn't cry enough for me when I was gone. Um, <laughs> I, I said, nah, you didn't give me enough. It's you know what I'm saying. You got rid of me too fast, but it was just a great time. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed how it developed in the storyline. And I still, like I said, that's one of my biggest moments because I got to, first of all, I got to be in Lover's Land. Then I had I got to act across from the great Kevin J. Stone. I had to be there for Nelson. And just to be there, and, and okay, I'll say this. And I say, and, I, and this not to be, I didn't realize Nelson was short as he was, so when we hugged in that scene, I almost felt like I needed to pick him up. But you know, but but he's he's a good dude, man. He's a good dude. So I enjoyed it. Man. And then yeah, and then like I said, Katia, she played your ex-wife, and you introduced right. you actually introduced me to Katia. So, yeah. you know, I definitely credit you for that because she's she's right. absolutely she's absolutely amazing. See, I, when I met her, man, she just just humble, sweet, talented. Man, out of this world. Um, and I said, you know, and I was I said, man, really. We need to do something together. And then when the opportunity came, I was like, hey, yo, uh, my man, look, I'm going to send his stuff. We're going to see what happens. So, mm-hmm. you know, and that's and that's how this game goes, man. That's what I love that you do. You 
you reach out to people and we should all be reaching out to somebody else trying to put somebody else on if you know a project or whatever that's that's what i love about you you reach out to people independent artists and then you don't get starstruck man like that um and that's what it's about just giving people a shot yeah definitely man i definitely appreciate that now i know i know uh that was your first time like really working with me um mm -hmm. so what was your like first impression because it was i'm not gonna front it was really chaotic um <laughs> like I, like i mean it was like i'm it was it was an organized it was organized chaos, chaos you mm -hmm. know because if again for people who have filmed with me before or if you don't really know like we were definitely filming a lot of stuff a lot of scenes trying to get right. stuff out, you know, trying to get stuff done because, again, you got so many people on set and that, and that, Carlos, actually that season, season three was the first season we actually had like Moni and her team, they was actually on set doing the makeup, yeah. the hair and the clothes and all that stuff, so we had, yeah. so I had to incorporate that into the schedules, it was just a lot of stuff going on, it's so funny because I'll watch the show now and I was like, how in the world right. did we do all that in such a short period of time and um it just amazes me just the the quality of the people that i got to work with mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because right. to me to me it's a team effort i mean i could put it all together but i mean if you don't have all the proper piece, pieces in place i mean it's it doesn't matter right. you know what i'm saying so i definitely appreciate like you and everybody that's been that was a part of everything that we've done but how was it when you came onto the set? You was look, you saw all this going on. You was like, right. I, I know if I would have nah. come on set, I would have been like, what's going on? Bro, let me tell you something. Nah, I'm going to tell you something, bro. You were the most organized uh, creator up to this point. I've been on a lot of sets, done shot a lot of stuff. Um, we shoot one scene this week. We shoot the next scene in March. We shoot the next scene in July. And then we'll see it in a year and a half. I'll be, you think I'm playing? I'm being dead serious. To see you do it within the time span, is you had everything lined out. Very, it's, it's, it's chaos, but it's organized. Everybody know where they need to be, where they need to be. But as soon as you stay quiet on the set, that's what I loved about it. How we was doing, what we was doing, Bula, once you stay quiet on the set, that's, that shows me respect for you, respect for the craft respect for the project. I've been on sets where a dude have to say quiet on the set 10 times or he had to shoot a gun, pow, pow, be quiet. So for you to just, I love the process. I love getting it done, getting it out of the way. All right, moving on to the next thing. Because when I first, I was like, damn, we're going to shoot this in the weekend? But I understood it. Like once once you give it, we're going to come in here, y'all. We're going to knock this thing out. It don't take a, it gonna take a long time. But ever since then, when I'm working with somebody, I'm like, yo, it's going to take this long. It's take this long because you want to take this long. Because sometimes we we put limits on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I love you. You push, you use every amount of space you have in a day. I don't care. If you squeeze it in, you can be like, all right, I'm going to shoot this real quick. Three minutes, I'll be right back. You go out there, shoot this, come back, do this. We'll shoot the scene. All right, y'all, person showed up. I'm going to go back here and shoot this five minutes. I'm, you use every amount of space. And you don't allow any kind of what I loved about it were between the scenes we could talk and chat but no distraction when you you were trying to fit a schedule man so I appreciate your schedule your dedication um your professionalism even in a like I said organized chaos as soon as you said quiet on the set everybody knew what that meant man that that, that means a lot man that that it's truly because sometimes you know you you could doubt yourself you could be like Right. Ah, it doesn't it doesn't seem like I know what I'm doing, but right. it all it all comes together. So to hear that 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 does mean a right. lot, you know. Because I mean, it's like when you're in it, it's like all right. You just for me, I was like, all right, I'm trying to get trying to get everything done, especially for people who like for like for instance for you, you were you weren't a regular, you were a guest star. So it was like right. trying to get all your stuff done, and then also still trying to make sure everybody else still straight. It was just yeah. it was a lot going on, you know. And then right. again, it just it's literally just me, you know. You know, most people they got their. Crews, That's what I love about it. They got their crews and everything. So I like, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would not, I would not suggest trying to do all this without a crew. <laughs> I would not like looking back on it, like just 
like 38 year old Carlton. Nah, I, you man, <laughs> that's what uh, that's what amazed me so much when you would come up here to shoot. It was you, camera, and a light. <laughs> that was it. You, camera, and a light. Now, you, and, and I'm like, it don't take. And he's 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 proven that it really don't take. You know, you, you work with them whatever you have, but I've seen man people show up with a sound person, light person, and it still come out looking like a freaking 1980 uh, floor model. What what's all the people for? You know, but you have it, that showed me you studied the craft, you studied your equipment, you studied light away. I don't need, I don't need to do this light here. Okay, this is all I need. When I tell you, you showed up with a camera and a light and a battery. That's it. And you might have some headphones. And the quality <laughs> that you put out, the quality that you put out, man, it's phenomenal. And just like I, it just hit me when you said it, it was just you. You and your camera, quiet on the set, X. All right, do it again. Man, I'm telling you, man, awesome, man. That's a gift. That I'm, everybody, you organize, they, they show you organize. I love it because you were organized. And I hate showing to a set, and I'm waiting. Mm. Get to a set, they tripping, they ain't there, they setting up. And to any filmmakers, anybody out there doing, um, I shouldn't beat you to your set. I shouldn't beat you to your set. And that's what they should, that should get me. That, oh, I beat you to your set. Now, wait, now you got to show up. Now you got to tell me your story. Now I got to sit there with you and you talking. You waiting on this camera. All right, man. All right, then by the time we done talk 45 minutes, all right, let me go on out to the truck and get my camera. Where I'm telling you, man, I've had some experiences. Bro. But I, I just appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I definitely appreciate that. Which leads to... Your leading role on the award winning now yeah. award winning series in the nick of time. But I have yes, we have yes. we, we gotta go through the background though first. We gotta get the people bit just, <laughs> just in case people have never heard this story from me, um, about how this show ended up being what it is now. So yeah. um it actually started off. It, I, I I can't say the name of the actor, but it started off <laughs> it started off being a script for a well-known actor. Um, he was in a he was in a mini series um, on NBC, and that's all I'm gonna say. And so then uh, I wrote the script for this person, and he was very excited actually about doing the project. I explained to him I was trying to I was trying to expand. I, I had just, I was I did stuff. I'm doing stuff in North Carolina, you know. Of course, I'm doing stuff here in Georgia. So I was like, okay, cool. I would love to expand out to LA, try to get a project out there to get some a web series done out there. Um, but he was very excited about the project. What happened was I was doing bondage at the same time. And mm. if you see bondage, <laughs> you know yeah. what the, you know what the show is about. <laughs> so <laughs> what ended up happening was since the people that were on his team at the time, they saw they, I guess they Googled me or whatever, they saw bondage and it was like they they didn't think it was a good idea for him to be associated with uh bondage you know with me you know with me wow, doing bondage yeah. because it might solely his brand or whatever so uh that so that didn't happen but i still had the scripts i just had him sitting there um an associate of mine that lived in new york i think he still lives in new york i'm not sure but anyway he was living at new york at the time and i told him about the project um, we ended up renaming it in the nick of time. Oh, that was another thing because the the, the original title of the show was the actor's name. It was his first name. Oh, wow. so like like you know like like Martin, you know Steve Harvey show. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. So it was his first name, and so that that was another reason why there was like they didn't think that would be a good idea. Um, so uh, yeah. So I mean, I have the scripts. We we I talked to the associate of mine and we end up changing it to in the nick of time so he was going to actually take the scripts and film it in new york so this would have been the first project where i was actually giving somebody else you know doing wow. somebody else is going to be doing the production um unfortunately it didn't pan out um i'm still to this day not sure what happened um so this is when I came to you and I was like, hey, I have this series that I really want to <laughs> shoot. 
I think it'll be dope. Would you be interested in playing the lead character, playing mm-hmm. Nick? Um, only thing I asked of you is if you could help me get the locations or you know all the, you know mm-hmm. just the locations that we need or whatever. And you and Javetta, because I wanted Javetta to be a part of it. And Javetta came in, of course, she played your manager. And you came in and you was like, yes, I would love to do it. And then we got Katia in there. Um, right. And then we get hit. And then I hit up my guy, Frederick Devon. He came in playing your brother. Um, now, this is where the tricky part came. <laughs> Who was going to play Andrew? And we could talk. We're definitely going to talk about this <laughs> Andrew situation this whole time. But let's talk about when you first got the script. <laughs> what were your thoughts about the show in the nick of time? Man, uh, first of all, I was blown away to have this opportunity to even play a lead role. That was really my first lead role in like the series. So I was excited. I was honored. I was nervous. I was scared. You know, everything goes in your head. It's like, can you pull it off? Can you be realistic? So you go through all this stuff in your head. It's like, no, you wouldn't be in this position if you couldn't do it. So I started reading the script and the storyline, it, it caught me and I was like, wow. And then it was, I don't know if it just, if you, you said you wrote this before you met me and I, it was so really close to my actual stuff I've been through. I was like, wait a minute, this will be following me? It, it, <laughs> it's funny how a lot of that stuff that I've been through dealing with, not to that extent, but dealing with, you know, my oldest daughter, I got, I was dealing with some issues with between me and her mom and trying to figure that stuff out and being a comedian trying to balance comedian work life and so a lot of this stuff and trying to go through my own head and um dealing with people close to me I just found I had a brother my brother's 19 years younger than me so we're still trying to understand our bond so I was like this is this is really like almost like my life and dealing with you know my 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 feelings and dealing with the caseworker and trying to figure that out. So it was just, it was so good because it challenged me to go deeper than a normal, okay, I can play a funny role. That's easy. That's I can play it in my sleep. But can I give these emotions in these different scenes? Mm-hmm. And so that's why I wanted to challenge myself with each role I wanted to be. I wanted to be good. I wanted to come off um, genuine, come off like, just like all the emotions that I need. And I, I feel... And I and I'm a very strong critic of myself. I'm like, ugh. But going back and looking at it now, I can see how the character evolved. See how me and my brother's relationship. See how me and the, me and um um what was your better name? Uh, uh, Diana. Thank Diana. Me and Diana's relationship kind of evolved. Me, of course, had you know Hannah. People love to hate her. I don't know why people just <laughs> people. Everybody like. Is she violate some rules or something? And you know, my my daughter's right now. She's starting to be a social worker. She's like, we can't be doing that. Day. I say, I know is people love to hate her, but then they grew to kind of in the beginning they were like, why is she doing that? But then they grew to love her. So um, I just I love it because even it started at a certain point and it evolved and it grew. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, yeah. I love the script. Definitely, man. I appreciate that, man. And definitely, I want to say I saw your your growth as an actor. I could tell that. I mean, you were good in season one, but the evolution of right, you can tell that you really studied throughout the course of mm-hmm. the filming. Because the difference between you season one and as an actor, and between you and season four, the final season is a, it's, it's, it's evident. It's there. Like yeah. you can tell, you yeah. can see the growth. So kudos to you on definitely just evolving the character like even even more. Right. Um, let's talk about this Andrew situation. Um, because <laughs> yeah, if you if you haven't seen the show, you will notice that uh, Carlos had three sons on that show. <laughs> man, everybody who watched it, they like, hey man, wait a minute. So I say, yeah man, just yeah, just go with no ass. But I'm saying, dog, he 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 went from light skin to dark skin to light skin. I said, just just go with it. <laughs> just, just you got to. So yeah. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first two seasons. So the first season, we had the original Andrew, excellent, amazing. He was awesome. Uh, great. Just he was great. great. So, but you right. know what happens as kids? Kids 
change their minds about things that they want right. to do. So originally he was like he really wanted to be an actor. We began. We started shooting season two. He told his mother he no longer wants to be an actor. He wanted to play basketball. <laughs> so she told me she said, "Yeah, he doesn't really want to act anymore." And I was like, "Oh, I kind of need him though." So we ended up. <laughs> so if you notice on season two, Andrew's only on the first two episodes and not the last two. Right. And I told him I said, "Hey, if you just give me one day with him, and we can knock out his scenes, mm -hmm. I promise you, we won't hear from me ever again." <laughs> and so he, he, you know, he. She talked to him. He said he'd do it. So he did right. that one day, and then, you know, that was it. And so then I already knew. Okay, so season three, because honestly, um, and this this sounds bad, but I honestly thought about so going. I, honestly I know about, I was gonna say going to say it. Go to I thought about killing Andrew off the show because you know y'all know me. I, I'm real quick yeah. to kill somebody off he, the show. Hey, <laughs> let me tell y'all something. Carlton will he 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 gonna replace you, and it'll be it ain't gonna be subtle. It it'll be like hey, hey oh man what happened Andrew died in a car wreck let's move on uh, and yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like nah that's 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 gonna be too much. I said that's that's too much. Um so then um I got a second per actor shout out to Nick Reese. Nick Reese came yeah. in season three. And played uh Andrew. And I and I think it had been some time between we shooting season two and season three yeah. anyway. So it kind of sort of worked, but like I said, the complexion kind of was like, uh, but yeah, I, just rock with it. That's that's all just just rock right with it. <laughs> if you can rock with the Aunt Bibbs, then you can rock right. with it. You you can rock with it. You can rock with it. And and Carson, what's funny is it's funny, people really pay attention to stuff. Yeah. People really pay attention, and that's why I tell people, man, people watch more than we think they do. They pay attention to every thing, every detail, her hair, her, like, for real, oh, wait a minute, Monique. They ain't the same Monique that was in the gutter. Don't worry about it. Keep going. We, we're going to keep, people pay attention, like, man, Lo, she got a, you got a new house every every season. Don't worry about that. You just, people really, my daughter asked my oldest girl, she said, well, daddy, okay, well, what kind of work do you do? <laughs> I'm, I'm a comedian she said but you ain't been in no show since the first season people really pay attention. that's what I love about all your content people pay attention. that's what's up I love it um so yeah so yeah we got we got to Nick Nick did it and then here we are <laughs> season four so what ended up happening is Nick is obviously older than what the character was Nick actually at the time was uh either junior high either junior high school no he was a junior he was junior high school, I believe. Sophomore or junior, but I believe junior. And by the time we was getting ready to shoot season four, he was getting ready to go off to college. Um, And so we ended up setting dates around him before he went off to college, but then he was like, something happened with the date, something happened with the date so he couldn't make it anymore. So then I was like, okay. Uh, so then we had to hit up, <laughs> so I hit up my guy, Monty. Uh, shout out to Monty and um, shout out to Monty, man. He Great came job. in and he came in and finished out the show for us, and finished out Andrew. So the evolution right. of Andrew, I talk, I talk about your evolution. I talk about your evolution. And Andrew's evolution is obviously apparent. <laughs> <laughs> but man, all all three of them man were great. Um, especially, Absolutely, like I said, the first Andrew man, that guy came in there, just he hit it, played this role, just. I said, what what you said throw me off was made me so into the scene. His the way he looked, yep, his yep. facial expression, yeah, like he was really, really dealing with something. And I've been that kid before. I've been that kid where, you know, you ain't seen your dad in a while. You see him and you don't know. It's like it's uncomfortable. I know he's my dad, but I ain't seen him. Um, a lot of people have told me some stuff, so I can see in his mind he's he's really going to that place. Yeah. So the Andrew, then the other one, he really was he all of them was good because they challenged me in different ways. Yeah. Um, because that scene where <laughs> I thought I was tripping, he stood it and he called me a lot. I was like, this dude really he meant that thing. Mm. He was like, No, 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 you're not. I was like, Oh, you gave that line, bro. Um, and then the last one, his emotion, mm -hmm. the level of his emotions in season four. That's why I cried. I cried for real, man. I was I, I don't even know where they came from, bro. I know. That I remember. I know. When we was out, it because I kept looking at him 
And that thing brought something out of me, bro. I was literally, I had to get myself together. And I'm glad you kept it because that was a real true moment. The moment I saw him, and it's something about watching him walk by the, the pain. I couldn't hold it, bro. Yeah. I couldn't, and that's and that's what that season and that whole series it evolved to because even though me and her went through our troubles, me and her was going back and forth. Um, I still loved her. She was, you know, my child, my son's mother. And I still, she really was the one I really loved, but we just couldn't work it out. And sometimes in life, I, I know this might sound crazy. Your heart can be torn because I, the one I really love and really want, we trying to figure it out. But that's, Monique really was his first love and he didn't know how to get over. Mm. And so he kept trying and they was doing the shacking up thing. They was doing the, you know, we live here. And then, <laughs> then in season three, I got caught up. And if you know what I'm saying, I went upstairs, came down, and was caught in between two worlds. So when she fought, and that's something, when a woman's really finally done with you, and you know she's done with you, that thing hurts. Because I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't talk in the stand. Yeah. And I was that scene that me and her, I felt that because she was like, I'm done. She like, no, I'm you are my when she said that you are my trigger, that. That scene was powerful because watching her walk out and Nick didn't know that'd be the last time he saw. Her. Yeah, you know shout what I'm saying. To, so the yeah, yeah. I was about to say shout out to Kimberly Newsom. Kimberly, man, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, shout out to her. Brought it. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like you said again, I want to acknowledge all three. Andrew, shout out to them too, man. They, I think this everybody just did an amazing job right. on that series. Everybody was a part of it. Um, you know. Everybody, man. You know, Bruce, I mean, I feel like you and Bruce were great at Bruce, antagonists right. against, against each other. Like, you know, just everybody that was a part. Again, shout out to Fred. Um, I love I love I love y'all's relationship on the show. Right. Um, yeah, everybody just did Donnell came in. Um Donnell came, the I, bad came, guy. Yeah, he was the bad guy, but I loved how Donnell made his character so three dimensional. You know, right. It was it was definitely, you know, you saw the reason, you know, of things yeah, of why yeah. things occurred. Um, and of course, Ronald, we gotta give a shout out to Bird, man. Bird came in. Yeah. She did her thing, course, you know, like, so, she, yeah. yeah. And then I love, and then even with development, me and her are so close, really, she's really like my, if I had a little sister to be her, mm -hmm. the scene we shot when we really was going at it. Yeah. I mean, that scene was so intense. It felt weird, but we know we both had I say, okay, Javetta, I know we don't do this, but we got to go at each other. Yeah. And you can tell we really went at each other. I said, I'm really going to go at you. I yeah. don't know if some stuff is in the script or not, but that's, but just to see the dynamics of everybody, even yeah. with, and when it just showed Nick so many levels to him. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because him and, um, you know, Hannah's, where it started, where it was going, where we thought it was going. Um, it was, we didn't know if we was crossing lines, we was, if we make a loser job, and it was, but man, that scene, when Monique showed up and walked in that living room. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to definitely <laughs> talk about that. Because, and, and then again, and then also shout, shout out to Javetta, shout out to Amston. Amston, Amston was, right. Yeah, he was, you know, I loved his, his he was the kind of the, he's, I mean, he's right. a comedian, he's a comedian too, but right. he came in as a comedic relief. So it was it was dope. Just everybody was a part of it in the time. Shout out to you. It so was just, it was real dope. Um, but we're gonna talk about that scene real quick because first of all, I just want to say it was not in the script for Nick and Monique to go up the stairs. <laughs> Carlos Big Los Macy came up with that. We was we were shooting. And it's because in the original script, they're supposed to just have the little moment in the kitchen and then she like leaves or whatever. Nick, uh, Carlos said, hey, I think she should lead him up the stairs. And I was like, uh, I said, you know, in the next scene, he supposed to kiss Hannah, right? And I was like, he was like, I know, but I just really think she should lead him up the stairs. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I said, I said, okay. I said, you're going to look real slimy. But right, <laughs> he was like, he's like, let's go with it. I said, okay, let's do it. Yeah. So that's how and that. I, 
That's how that scene happened. That was definitely a Carlos <laughs> suggestion that we decided to go with. <laughs> and I'm telling you, man, you'd be surprised how many people paid attention to me going upstairs, coming back down. They was like, dude, you just got finished. But I wanted to show that level of, even though me and her are friends, but our connection is so strong to where, you know, I, I can't tell her no. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm pulled in that way, but then here come Troublemaker knocking on the door. I can't tell her no. So my heart is being split, you know, and that's one thing about Nick. He was dealing with so many different things, and one of his weaknesses was women. Mm. So he was trying to please two women and almost losing, end up losing both of them. But I want that scene to show where he can't tell her, even though he tried to dress her like we just friends, and but she kept kind of baiting him and baiting him. Well, you know, she she turned you down, did she? Well, you know, just and I was like, baiting him and baiting him, like, I like this. You know, I messed everything. I was like, yeah, it's time for him to seal the deal. Mm. But oh, but it shows some men get caught up like that because some men vices or people are addicted to women, but he was trying to deal with that thing and you know, I hope it came out all right. Nah, it came out <laughs> great. It came out fantastic. That was a great suggestion. I'm glad that I listened to you. So that was right. that was dope. Who does who does Carlos think Nick should be should have been with? Ended up with. We already know what happened, but who does <laughs> Carlos think Nick should have ended up with at the end? Let's let's add like let's Damn, add like a, a, a spoiler alert. If, yeah, you has, seen, yeah. if you have not seen it in the nick of time, Monique did die, and Nick did end up with <laughs> Hannah. But we're gonna add like Monique didn't die, and we're gonna add like he did end up with Hannah. So, but who does Carlos think that Nick? Wow, man, this hey man, that that's a tough question because he was in love, honestly, with Monique, but he was hurt. But he had fall he was falling for him. So and they kept getting closer. But because he couldn't distance himself from Monique, he couldn't really Free himself from her. So it was a hard. So the one I think he, sh because of his connection with Andrew, I'm going to say this, he probably should have worked it out with money. Because mm. that would have been um, probably best for his family. And, but the only thing is, Hannah couldn't keep coming around. That was it. Every time it get good, we get a knock on the door. Mm -hmm. every time we get comfortable so I think if he would have kind of just like because you think about it what pushed what pushed Monique to go do what she was did was seeing me doing what I did mm. so Nick really what really broke me down I, I took the blame of her passing away mm. because if I wouldn't have did that right after I did what we did knowing how she felt about me knowing how I felt about her and that's sometimes with men, they take for granted a woman's feelings when you be with them intimately. Mm. He being with her intimately, give giving her false hope. Um, she and you can every scene you can see she was kind of building up hope, even though she dealt with Hannah, she liked her. I love when she showed she didn't really care for her. So me giving her that hope, and when we finally connected, or it made it look like we connected, she had hope. So when she came downstairs and saw. That, that broke a heart. Yeah. So when we when people get hurt, they result. So I would say I would say I would say wow. that's probably the best. Ah, uh, Monique, Miss Monique, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's. I want to definitely uh, say salute to you because you, out of all the people that I have worked with, um, you are one of the most consistent promoters that uh did you did one of the most consistent promoters man like you're always when the season was going when the season was new new season was going when we're out of season even now <laughs> it's like you're still constantly promoting yeah. the show and i and i just appreciate that about you and i appreciate you for doing that because like you definitely when you when uh, it's a, it's amazing when someone takes the lead of a project they really put on that captain's hat. You really put on the captain's hat 
for this show. So the show, I really truly believe the show would not be what it is today without you. So definitely want to give you a shout okay. out and say thank you for everything that you've done. Oh man, I appreciate for this it, show, man. We def I definitely appreciate you. And that's the thing. It's like you know, I don't understand, but you know, people, everybody do their own thing. But if I'm in a project, especially if it's something that I know it's good quality. And this, and that's what promotion is. That's what marketing is. Um, push, put it out there. Keep because there are people who haven't seen it. That you get new friends, you get new followers. There are people to this day that I'm still trying to reach that never seen it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna keep putting it to where when they see it. I had a guy inbox me. Matter of fact, last week, he's like, "Man, I'm trying to find in the good time. I see you post about it. Can you send me the link? Because you said so. It people will get around to it mm -hmm. once you if you keep putting it in their face. So. And I just lead in the project, and you it, it'd be surprised I'm talking to people and they followed the show, um, who their favorite characters were, um, you know, who they who they play to, what what I think is going on. I shouldn't have yelled at Diana like that. You better leave Hannah alone. Um, Monique need to leave you. You know, they you know how people get caught up. They get caught yeah. up in it. Man, you should have whooped your brother tail. How dare you do so? I wanted to create that kind of fan base, just like you see anybody else. Yeah, create it. You know what I'm saying? We 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 sometimes ask. We we do a lot of complaining. Well, ain't nobody support me. No, no, you ain't put it out there enough. Mm. I want I want you to get sick of it to where you say, man, let me go watch this. Man, he been paid. Man, this, but a lot of people are like, no, so I finally watched your series. I don't get salty, but I'm glad you. At, at some point in time, you you sit down and you finally saw it. Yeah. And like you said, I, I say this all the time, man. There are billions, billions of people in this world. Stop worrying about the 20 people who don't like your stuff. Mm. There are billions of people on this world that, that that's waiting to see your stuff. Keep putting your stuff out there. If you get if y'all get tired of me posting, mute me. But I know there's billions of people who ain't gonna mute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I keep it in rotation. Um, because I wanted people to really, really see this project, which this project has helped me do other projects. Because this project helped me do the movie that's on Tubi. This project helped me do something else. This project helped me do the positive. You know what I'm saying? So each thing leads to something else. Right. Um, so I just appreciate the opportunity, man. Yes, definitely, man. I, I, say, I appreciate you, man. I want to say also, too, so you were also in Pastor Thorne, uh, right. uh, Lust of the Flesh. You only had one scene, but I feel like your scene was so, <laughs> was, your scene was so dynamic. In that in that entire film, how you did the deacon just came in and said, "You know what? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, this ain't happening." Your son tried to rape my daughter. Right. Da 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 da. Like, how was that for you? Because again, again, you only had that one scene, but again, it, it was one such scene. a it was a powerful scene though. Like, I felt like right. you came in and, and just dominated. You dominated, man, for sure. So, how was that right. working on that film? I, I I enjoyed the process and just to get ready for that, I was like. You know, just thinking about my own, my, you know, just think about my, I have children and just to think about if something was after my kids or the dad and like it didn't happen. And I really had to feel like I really wanted to jump across the table. Mm -hmm. I had to go in there and be like, I don't care what's going on. We we Christians or not, you're going to catch these Christian hands. So, <laughs> and be, But the funny part is people have seen the movie mm -hmm. and inbox me. So now I was watching this Pastor Thorne and somebody sent me a video. I was sitting here and I was like, wait a minute. I know that guy. So that's why I mean people are seeing it in the good quality. And they was like, man, I thought you were going to jump across the table and get the dude. But I, I just love that kind of scene. And I'm a fan of him too. But that particular scene, it was like, man, nah, man, you're going um, to catch these Christian hands yeah. in the church house. So, yes. Shout uh, out to Marquis. I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely, man. Right. Shout out to Marquis who played Pastor Thorne. Y'all definitely y'all had a right. good dynamic in that scene. So that was dope. Right. That was definitely dope. So this brings us to the Kwanzaa movie that is finally right. out. Finally yes. out, yes. Tubi. We've been waiting a very long time for this. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you know, like I said, that's you know, things may not happen when we want it, but God knows right. the perfect time when things are supposed to happen. So, but here right. we are. The Kwanzaa movie is out. You play um, the father. Dr. Hakeem, what was y'all's last name? <laughs> what was our last I name? Even, what? what was our last I name? Even, I said, I remember, call me Papa King. That's right, <laughs> right, right. And she said, hey, Mama Candace, no, call me Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. 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 What was it? I can't, 
I could, but she hit she mama. Yeah, um, Audrey, I, Audrey, yeah, yeah. When yeah, I tell yeah. you, Audrey played that mama role. Her, her, and is it, how do you say Chantel? Chantel. Uh, Ch- no, um, Chantaria. The girlfriend. Chantaria. Chantaria. Her and Ch- Chantaria. The, the 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 dynamics between them two was on point. That the that was just so. Man, I love them too. The way they clash and their story and how it built, how they, you know what I'm saying? And I was just a fan of all of them. I just, it, it came across so well. But I love, I love that particular film, man. We I had so much fun too. And we had a great message too. Yeah, I, it's going to bother me if I don't uh, find this last name. Because I know y'all going to be like, Carlton, how do you not? <laughs> I know y'all be like, Carlton, how do you not know your character's names? I'm like, listen, when I write, once it comes out the dome, it's out the dome, and I don't remember right, anything after right. that. Um, what was their last name? Where is the script? Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> last name, Morgan. Morgan. That's Morgan, it. that's it, Morgan. Yeah, so... um. <laughs> Yes, so uh, just uh, you did say you had a lot of fun, like just brief, okay, because again, we shot that fa- fairly quickly. Um, right. we shot all of we shot all y'all scenes in three days, right? All the stuff yeah. that happened in that occurred, it occurred in that house, the family vacation, <laughs> house, the family house. We shot all that in three days. What was your experience like working with everybody? You got to you get work with Chantel, Nicole, Sataria, right? Um, Arthur, uh, Caleb, you already mentioned Audrey. Jamaris, right. Jamaris is in it. Simone's, Simone Wilson's in Got it. Me, yeah. Um. So those people that you really interacted with in right. the movie, like, what was that experience like for you? Um, just it doing was, it, man. It was awesome, man. Just to be around the people I've seen for so long, been fans of, and just to be a part of this project. And I had to kind of come to the realization that. I'm not the young heartthrob like I used to be. You know, I'm not the young spring chicken um, like I used to be. You know, I've got a little, got a little wind under myself. So I have to, you know, I have to move over and play the dad role now. So um, just to be there, man, just to really, we, we built like a family. They was like my daughters, my sons, and um, we just had fun, man. It was just being in that daddy role and dealing with, you know, Audrey and her emotions and trying to keep her straight. And I'm trying to, it was just great dynamics to, to, uh, when you, when you're on set with some great people and they take the, and I love because everybody took their craft serious. Mm-hmm. Everybody took their line serious. Everybody took the scene serious. Um, it was very professional. We had fun. Uh, of course, I love the food scenes. Uh, love <laughs> the food scene. Food scenes was great, but it just to uh, be around them and just, uh, um, I'm a fan of all of it, just to kind of sit there. It was, it was good. I, I love, and plus, I got to learn. Um, this particular film, I feel, is going to be something that's going to be around for a while because it teaches us about this particular holiday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of times, people don't want to acknowledge, they don't know nothing about, well, uh, are they misinformed? A lot of us are misinformed. Oh, I ain't no Muslim. I ain't studying Kwanzaa. Somebody said that to me, and I was like, what? You don't have to be a Muslim to study Kwanzaa. What you talking about? But a lot of people are misinformed. So once they saw the movie, oh, oh, man, that was nice. They had a good message. That mama, that mama was something else. So just to see people getting educated, why they're being entertained. Right. So it's powerful. So, of course, by being Black History Month, now y'all know I'm going I'm to promote that movie all month. So, yeah. And that and that's what the point was of the movie. The movie was definitely to educate. Because I know, like I said, growing up, not that, not that it was like forbidden to celebrate Kwanzaa. It was just the fact we yeah. didn't know anything about it. So it was like that. when I got became an adult and became began be, began to become more knowledgeable of it. Then I was like, okay, yeah, this is something that. And again, it's not you're not taking away from Christmas. You can still celebrate Christmas. Right. Kwanzaa is not a religious holiday. It's just a it's holiday. Not. It's a holiday where we as African Americans decide to celebrate and, and really understand the importance of family and mm-hmm. what it truly means, what the holidays really truly mean and what we're supposed right. to be, you know, what we're supposed to celebrate, you know? So 
Yeah, like you said, it's there for the people who are there for this form. But I'm going to go back to your hot throb comment because I wouldn't disagree with you. I'm going to definitely disagree with you because I've heard that women love you because even in the nick of time, people were, I heard people were fawning over Nick. That's what I heard. I heard people loved you. They was like, oh, we love some Carlos. So I'm, gonna let, I'm not gonna let you, I'm not gonna let you say uh that. That's that I'm not gonna let you get away with that. Cause I I heard I heard differently, sir. And, and 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 let's put it out, let's put it out there. This man is a married man, happily married man. Yeah. So yeah, y'all do not be up in his DMs. Don't be up in his DMs, don't be up in his messenger. That ain't so. None of that. None of it, because the but wifey, because you know, like, the wifey ain't gonna play that. Because I, I know her too. Yeah. She is not playing right. any of that. <laughs> baby Kiki wide, baby Kiki wide ain't playing none of that. That's my little Kiki wide. But man, I take it all. I take it all in stride, man, and and I take it. You know what I'm saying? As a compliment. You know what I'm saying? I try to always put my best foot forward. Because I know I'm representing a lot of different people. I'm, you know, of course, I'm representing my family and stuff like that. But I'm representing the big guy. So I'm gonna make sure that my my clothes are just very well fit. That I'm not on scene with a medium shirt or um, two skinny jeans on. I'll make sure I'm well fit. So I represent the ball brothers. Make sure I'm, when I'm bald, I make sure I'm well groomed, and of course I'm represent you know my culture. So um, just my confidence, man. I always have. I had to build and develop this confidence. Cause growing up, like I said, I didn't have it because I was always the chubby kid, the fat kid. So going through sports, um, like I said, you grew up in church. I grew up in church. I didn't have a choice. My mama made me get up in front of church and say the Easter speeches. Early on, I didn't have a choice. None of that stuff. So it taught me how to be in front of people and be comfortable um, being in front of people. So the confidence I hope I brought over um, on the camera is that, you know, you still, it don't matter what your size and stuff like that, man. You can still look fly. My dad always told me, say, okay, I'll be a yard man. There are people make nice clothes for big people too. Mm-hmm. I always want something that's nice. Present yourself. And you know what I'm saying? Carl, I can help that God is blessed with all this sex. I mean, that's just um, I'm just sexy. You know, I'm you know, you can be sexy and say, you know what I'm saying? So um, but I just, you know, it's it, it I can't help it, man. It's just who I am, but not, but um just overall, man, I it's compliments, man. I don't take it. Uh, for granted or get big headed about it. But like I said, this confidence that you see and um, stuff that comes across and being able to stand in front of people because growing up I had a um, I had a speech problem. I used to mm-hmm. stutter a lot. Mm-hmm. It still comes out sometimes when I get nervous, but if you look how God blessed me with that speech problem to where now people are paying me to come and talk. I'm on camera talking to people. And I always tell people, don't let something that you feel uh, that other people put on you where you can't do this, man, because you stutter or you don't know how to say your words right. Nah, man, God used that thing and turned it around. And now, really, people pay me to come and speak to them. Um, being on camera and stuff like that, I had to teach myself. So I, I always, for anything, man, before shooting, comedy, I always give glory back to God. God, I thank you for this gift. I thank you for this time. I thank you for this opportunity. because. Which the gift you have in me, it's not for me. It's, it's for me to give it back to people. So I never take this gift for granted. It's, you know, what you see that God has allowed me to work and develop, man, just like I see in you, man. And what I love about your gift that you, you develop it, you don't let know what pe- people don't like, their opinions. It don't matter. It don't matter what nobody thinks. As long as you explain that gift, man. So um, I appreciate that. I appreciate all the compliments, but yeah. I'm married with four kids. Um, God is blessing me with a beautiful support system. And they're my motivation. Because as you know, man, doing this stuff, man, and I love that you're close to your family, it, it gets tough sometimes. Mm-hmm. It gets tough trying to create something, trying to do something. Um, it's seasons where it's low time, it's high time, um, opinions and all that kind of stuff, man. But supporting your family, that means everything. And I'm going to ask you this real quick. I don't know if, how much time we got. No, you're good. You're I, good. I know your family watch your shows with you and stuff like that. So, Forrest, how did your family take in it? My family loved In the Nick of Time. They loved the show. 
Um, Marcus and Barry, my, uh, my mom and my sister were really into it for sure. Um, very invested in it. My sister could not stand Hannah. <laughs> nope. I, my sister could not stand her. I don't, I, I, yeah, I think Hannah was her least favorite character on the show <laughs> for sure. But they loved it, man. They loved the storyline. They really enjoy all four seasons, man. And they, you know, they, they were, they were, they were fans of the show. So that definitely right. for sure. Right. So I appreciate that, man. But yeah. Like I said, overall, man, it was like, I said, it was a great journey. Um, and I know it's not the end of the journey that we'd be doing together, but um, I did hate that we came to an end, but I know it had to wrap up sometime. Um, but yeah. I think that fourth season, I know I kept saying we can come back, but that was a lot. It was. That fourth mm-hmm. season was a lot. <laughs> and and I think we left on the right note and left it at that point, but it was it was that was the peak of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I'm always an advocate of I want to end on my own own terms versus right. You know, not have an opportunity to end. So that's right. I was like, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and wrap this on up and and right. you know give everybody the ending that they deserve. Sure, because that that right. show deserve, I, that show deserves to end properly. Right, and so you know you know how I put stuff out there to kind of make people think and just um just put stuff out there just to kind of create dialogue. Mm-hmm. Somebody asked me. I think I put a picture of the way Hannah was looking at me when I walked on. She had her hand on her stomach. Mm-hmm. And somebody mm-hmm. said, Is Hannah gonna be pregnant? I was like, nah, this is the last season. Nah, you can tell me, is she is she pregnant when she was looking at you? I was like, how but it it, 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 it amazes me how people can pick up and they create their own little narratives. Yep. In their head, and I was like, I never. But then I went back and looked at the picture I posted. I was like, Wow, I I can see the way she's looking that she has a hand on her stomach. I was like, Okay, it it, it it's still amazing how people can pay attention to a show. Yeah, definitely. We and we salute all the all the fans. We definitely right. appreciate yeah. you. We would not be here without you guys. Um, yeah. public. I public want to say congratulations to you, Carlos. On Having an award-winning show, man. You know, that's, yes, that's man. dope, man. So congratulations to you. Is there any final words that you want to say as we wrap things up? No, nah, man, just I appreciate this time. Uh, thank you again, man, just for you being you, man, for creating your gift, cultivating your gift, and bringing people around, trying to give people a shot. You gave me a shot, and I appreciate it, man. I just, I tell anybody, man, don't ever think you're too old or it's too late to go out there and do something that you have a dream or just just do it. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the talent, man. Because like I said, when you hit me up talking about awards and people enjoying it, honestly, I'm still in shot like, man, maybe it's, you know, okay, maybe it was because everybody else was good. And I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Because I always I'm hard on myself. Mm. But to see that award is like just sometimes you just gotta sit in it. Yeah. Don't question it. Don't don't deny. Just be like, God, you did this. Yep. You know, just and I, man, you and I try not to get emotional when I talk about it and think about it, based on what I went through last year and stuff like that. And you know, tell people I was like, God, you did this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. to somebody way on another coast somewhere, like what we put out as a project, and <laughs> this might. I'm telling y'all, stop worrying about those 20 people who don't like your stuff. When you told me those people loved it and uh, we got awards, there are people that are within proximity that you've never even seen. And that speaks, that's like, okay, don't worry about people that are close to you. They'll, they'll catch on if they do, but if they don't, it's fine. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I appreciate you, man. I really do. But well, definitely got to, like you said, got to give glory to God. Got to give glory to God for sure. Right. Definitely got to do that. Well, right. Carlos, thank you so much for your time, man. I definitely appreciate you, brother. Thank you for taking the time out yeah. to. Oh, to one, chat, man. one last go, question, man. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go one, ahead. One last question. This, this, I'm put you on hot seat. Okay. Um, am I am I coming back for Pastor Thorn three? <laughs> <laughs> Uh. 
<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> we are going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, oh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Thank y'all so much for being here for VPN chat. We definitely appreciate you. And we'll talk to you next. Y'all know it's hard to answer the question, right? We'll talk to y'all next time. Y'all be easy. Be appreciate blessed. you, man. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate you, man. Y'all be blessed. We'll see y'all next VPN chat. Peace. Peace. <laughs>